Hello and welcome to the Create and Learn channel where we make magic with technology. Today we are going to be making a Pac-Man game. This is going to be really cool because the way that I'm going to show you how to make this game, you're actually going to be able to take the ghosts and you'll be able to change exactly how they look and you'll even be able to make more of them. So if you end up deciding the ghosts are like the bad guys, so if you want like 10 bad guys on the field, you have that. If you only want one, you can do that too. I'll show you how to do that um, later in this video. But first, let's go ahead and get started. So before I make a game, I usually like to go ahead and actually go ahead and play the game. So I've got, what I've done is I've gone on Google here and I've just pulled up like a random Pac-Man game. I figure, hey, let me give it a try. So what I'm noticing as I'm playing, I'm not playing to win right now. I'm just playing to figure out how it works. So I notice I'm using arrow keys to control this little yellow guy on the bottom. You see I push the up arrow key and oh no, uh oh, I hit a ghost and now I'm dead. That's sad. Okay, well, let's try it again. Good thing I have another life. I can always reload and get a fresh one. So I'm going to go over here. I also notice as I run over these dots, I like eat them. And I think that's how you win. So I'm going to kind of run over some dots. And it looks like I also... Uh-oh, I'm in a bad position here. Oh, yeah, sure enough. So it looks like we've got a few things going on here, though. Let me just reload so that it doesn't, like, kill me. But basically what we got is we got all these dots that we're trying to eat. And we've got all these walls. And we're not allowed to go through the walls. So we're going to see if we can do that. And then as our final challenge, what we're going to do is we're going to make these ghosts, these bad guys, and we're going to see if we can get them to eat our little Pac-Man guy whenever they hit them, just like that. So let's go ahead and dive into Scratch and see if we can make this work. So I'm going to leave this open just because, um, I don't know, in case we ever need to go back to it. So I've gone ahead and created a new Scratch project here. If you're not sure how to do that, you just go to the Scratch website, and this little Create button that pops up in the top here. So you'll click that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to name it. See how it says Untitled 10 up here? That's the name of the project. I'm going to call it Pac-Man. That way I can just find it again whenever I'm ready. Now, on Pac-Man, the first thing that I want to make is that little yellow guy, I think. I think that'll be a good place to start. And he is going to what we call a sprite. That means he's going to move around. So if I look at the board, the yellow guy, he would be a sprite. These ghosts, those would be sprites. The board, that would not be a sprite because the board doesn't ever move. That's going to be our background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and head over here. This is where we keep all of our sprites. I don't really want the sprite because it's a cat. I want a Pac-Man. So I'm going to hit the X trash can. Oh, goodbye, cat. But I want one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this. And I'm not actually going to click it. I'm going to move my mouse on top of it and see how it gives me other options. I want to make my own sprite. So I'll hit paint. Now what that's going to do is that's going to create a new one. See, it's called sprite one here. And we're going to make that a Pac-Man. So um, you can use these plus and minus things to like zoom in, zoom out. And so I'm going to do that. And a Pac-Man, I think he's just going to be a circle. And I'm going to make mine yellow. You can make yours a different color if you want. Like, hey, maybe you want your Pac-Man to be like bright blue or something. That's totally fine. You just slide this slider to whatever color you want. And I usually will just set both of these to 100. It makes it the brightest color it can. If you're trying to make something like gray, that's why you would slide it back over here. See how I can kind of get like grayish colors um, or darker versions of yellow. But I want the brightest yellow I can get. There we go. That looks good. And I'm going to go ahead and draw myself a Pac-Man. Oh yeah, that looks like a nice Pac-Man. Now, my Pac-Man's got an outline. I don't want that outline. See how it's got like a black line around the outside? That's pretty easy to fix. You click this outline button and click the slash, which means none. Oh, goodbye outline. We're all better. Cool. So, I mean, that's great. It's like a Pac-Man. But what if I want him to have a mouth? So if I go ahead and head over here, I notice he starts right with no mouth. And then he like opens and closes his mouth as I go. Do you see that? So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a one costume, it's called, where he's going to have a mouth and one costume where he won't. So I'm going to go ahead and go up here. I'm going to actually, before I do that, I've got something weird. So I think, ooh, hang on. I think I didn't delete something I was supposed to. Yeah, sure enough. So I've got something weird here. So if for some reason your sprite isn't behaving right, it was doing something funny. And so what you can do is you can draw a box. See, I'm drawing this box. That just catches anything that's in the box. And oh, look, I caught something. So I'm going to delete it. There you go, that looks better. Now I'm going to go to duplicate it. Yours should not have that issue. I'm not sure where that came from. I must have drawn a little tiny circle by accident. There we go. So now I've got two costumes. I'm going to have this one, which is like the circle. 
And I've got this one, which is going to be him with a mouth. How do we make a mouth, though? Oh, look, here's an eraser. I wonder if we can make a mouth with that. So I can make a mouth and say, like, I'm like, oh, yeah. Um, hmm. That's kind of a curvy mouth. And maybe you like curvy mouths, but I want my mouth to be a little straighter. So I'm going to try that again. What I can do, see how it's really hard to make a straight mouth? Just because, like, my circle for erasing is so big. Watch this. I can come up here, and it's 40. I'm going to change that to, oh, 10 or something. Now, look how much smaller my circle is. And so I'm going to come in here, come out here, and now I've cut a mouth, except for I have to remove this middle piece, right? Because it's just like floating there. So I'm going to kind of erase that. Ooh, there's still some bits. Get rid of all the bits. Oh, yeah, that looks good. And I think I've got all of it. Very nice. All right. So you can kind of make yours look however you want. This is how I choose to make mine look. If you want yours to be hot pink and have two mouths, you know, have fun. The idea here is just to kind of show you how to do it, and then you're going to take it, and you're going to make it even better. So here we go. We've got our, like, little Pac-Man doohickey. We've got him with his closed and open mouth. Now let's go and see if we make it move. So on top, you're going to switch back to code. And how do we make a Pac-Man move? I like to use the move 10 steps command. This is probably my favorite way to move. Every time I click it, oh, look at that. He moves 10 steps. But I don't want to have to come in and click my code to make him move. Instead, we always click this green flag. Green flag is supposed to be the start button. So I'm going to click over here to events, and I'll grab this thing. See how it kind of fits together? It's like a little puzzle piece here. So basically what we're doing is we're going to say when flag is clicked, go ahead and move 10 steps. So here, I'll move it back here. I can click the flag, and look, he moves 10 steps. Check that out. That's awesome. Except that's not really quite what I wanted. I wanted him to keep moving. I don't want to have to click the flag every time. The idea is you click the flag once, and that's like hitting the start button on the game. And then once the start button's hit, he's supposed to move forever. So let's go ahead and see what we can do. I'm going to scroll down here and check this out. I got a forever loop. I'm going to go ahead and grab that guy. So what this is going to say is basically do whatever is in here over and over and over forever. Basically until you hit the stop button. As far as the computer knows, that's forever. Like time begins when you hit the flag. Time ends when you hit the stop. So forever is between when you hit the start and stop button. So I'm going to go ahead and say, all right, when the flag is clicked, move 10 steps forever. And I'll keep doing that. So let's see what happens. There we go. Flag. Whee. Uh-oh. Let's try it again. Pull him back. So he's moving all right, but he's got a problem. He's kind of, there's no way to get him back other than to like kind of grab his rear end and try and pull him back. So that's awesome. I'm going to stop it so that he doesn't keep running away. I hit the, that stop sign to stop it. So it's great that he moves 10 steps, but I don't want him to always be moving 10 steps. I only want him moving 10 steps when I push the arrow key. If you, you couldn't see what I was doing over here, but on this game, I only move when I push the arrow key. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can get our Pac-Man to do that as well. So let's go ahead and see what we can do. I will go here, and you see this if statement? This one is really cool. So I'm going to say if, what should we say? How about arrow key right is pressed? So I'm going to hit right arrow is pressed. Move 10 steps. Now let's see what happens. Hit play. Ooh, look at that. I, so you're not seeing it right now, but I'm hitting the right arrow and he was moving 10 steps. But I want to push the left arrow now. Hmm. He's not moving. Well, what should I do? Well, let's... Maybe it's because I don't have one that says if left arrow is clicked. So let's go ahead and make one. So I'm just going to right click and duplicate. So sometimes you tap with two fingers on your keypad, on like the mouse pad, and you can hit this duplicate button. It's super useful because it lets you have the same thing. And then I'll just adjust it. Oh, come on. So there's right arrow. Let's make one for left arrow. If left arrow is clicked, what should I do? I'll move 10 steps. All right. So I'm going to push the right arrow, and he moves 10 steps. He moves that way. Now if I do left arrow, huh. He's still moving right. Why is that? That is because I never turned him. See, my guy, my Pac-Man is pointing in that direction. If I spin him around, ooh, now he's pointing in this direction. So there we go. Now if I push my arrow keys, he'll move this way. It actually doesn't matter which one I push. He's going to move that way anyway. So how do I make it so that it always spins him to the direction that I'm clicking on my arrow keys? Go ahead and check this out. In motion, up at the top, I have something that says 
point in direction, and now I can pick what direction he points. So if right arrow is pick, pressed, I'll make this arrow point right. But if left arrow is pressed, let's go ahead and make him point in the other direction. Now let's see what happens. Ooh, look at that. So I push the right arrow and he goes right. I push the left arrow and he goes left. And he even flips around just like in the real game. That's awesome. All right, so we're doing good. I think this Pac-Man is about to be going through a maze in a minute here. We haven't made the maze yet, so I'll, I'll help you guys with that when we get there. But I think, I think we're in good shape. Now what I think we need to do, though, is maybe so we can go up and down, right? When I hit play, he moves left and right. My up and down arrows aren't doing anything. Let's see if we can figure out why that is. So I'm going to go here. I see i got a right arrow, left arrow. I don't have any up or down. So let's go ahead and duplicate this. Let's do one for an up arrow. Perfect. So same code as before, right? Except, remember, we just got to change the direction. So I'm going to go straight up. And let's do one for down arrow, just because I feel like I know what I'm doing here. So I'll do up arrow. I'll do one for down arrow. And we'll go here and just, oops, that wasn't straight down. That is straight down. Now I'll hit play. And ooh, look at that. Now I can control my Pac-Man all over the screen. Whee! All right, that's cool. But one other weird thing. You guys remember how when I was doing this, he would like open and close his mouth? Like, look at that. His mouth keeps going open, close, open, close, open, close really, really fast. And I, I like that. And remember how we even made a costume? that would let us open and close the mouth. If we go to costumes, remember we have one where it's closed and one where it's open. How do we access that? How do we tell it switch? It's really easy actually. You go to looks and all you're gonna do is add a next costume on the bottom here. Now I'll hit play and whoa, look how fast that guy is switching his mouth style. It's pretty impressive. So if I'm like, all right, maybe that's a little too fast for me. I, I want him to go a little bit slower. That's okay. What I can do is I can make one where it slows it down. So I'm going to go ahead and hit events. I'm going to get another one flag clicked. So this one, this is only going to be in charge of movement. My next one flag clicked, I'm going to add another forever. So it'll have two things that's always doing. This one is just going to be for opening and closing his mouth. Because when I tried to put them together, it didn't go so well, right? So that next costume. And this is going to make him go super fast again, right? Wow, he's like really chomping down. And maybe that's what you like, and so that's okay. But if it's not, what you can do is you can add a wait command in here. Look at that. Now he's opening and closing really slowly. All right, so one is obviously too long for me. At least I, I want him to go faster. I'm going to try zero. Oh, no, we're back to that really fast. All right, are there numbers between zero and one? Well, what about a half? Do you know how to write a half? using decimals. It's kind of like dollars and cents. Basically, if I want one half, if I have a half a dollar, that is 50 cents, and I would write that 0 0.50. There we go. Let's see what happens now. All right, he's opening and closing a little faster. I want him to go faster than that, though. So I want him to wait for less time. Before, he was waiting for 0 0.50, which was 50 cents. Now I'm going to try 25 cents. That's less, right? Ooh, there we go. That looks like a good rate. I think I like that. Yeah. And maybe you want to adjust it even more. It's up to you. You can kind of make it feel however you want. But that is the key to adjusting basically how your Pac-Man moves. Now, what else do we need to do? We probably need to make it so that when he crashes into a wall, he stops, right? So let's see if we can figure out how that works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and hit backdrops. And so far, what we've done is we had our sprite, right? And we would hit costumes and we were able to draw on it. Now I'm going to go back to my code. I'm hitting backdrops over here. And now look, it changed from costumes to backdrops. I can actually choose what my backdrop looks like. So when I look at this one, I see a few things. I see a black background. I like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make a big black background. So to do that, it's really easy. All you have to do is make a black rectangle. So this is the rectangle tool. You can draw a rectangle. To make it black, you just find whatever slider has the black on it. Oh, look, this one does. Okay, wee. There we go. Now it's black. And now I make a big black rectangle over everything. Oh, check that out. Now I have a nice black background. 
Now here's the tricky part. You need to make your Pac-Man, this guy, fit through your backdrop, through, through the walls in your backdrop. Otherwise your Pac-Man's gonna get stuck, right? So, um, oh no, my backdrop went away. I, if you end up like on your sprite like this and you're like, I didn't want to edit the yellow circle, I wanted to edit this black thing, just click back over here and I'll take you back. So I need to make some walls. How do I make walls? I like to make them using lines. So I grab a line and this is basically saying your line is going to be black. How well do you think a black line is gonna show up on a black screen? Not very well, right? So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna make this line, ooh, what color should we make it? I'm gonna try making mine blue. Make it a nice light blue. There we go. And we can see it pretty well. And also I'm gonna go ahead and increase this number. This is how thick your line is. Like look how thin that line is. I can barely see that. I want it to be thicker. So I'm gonna crank it up a lot. Here we go. Let's go like 20. Let's see how that line looks. It's pretty good. You can even try like 200. See how that line looks. Hmm, maybe that's a little too big. Okay, I, I like the 20. So you can play with it, or I'll do 25. I think that sounds good. Whee. Yeah, those lines look good. Okay, I'm gonna delete those lines. I don't want them. Oh, man, switched back to 100 for me. That was nice of it. So if you're trying to delete a line and you can't figure it out, all you do is you click this mouse button that lets you select things. I'll click on the line and hit that delete button. There we go, click on that, click delete. Now let's go and draw our lines again. We're ready to go. Now, all you have to do is really make a maze. So I'll start, oh, I don't know, maybe I'll have a line there, and I'll have a line there. And if you wanna look up an online picture of a maze, you totally can. And make a line there, kinda of make a line there, kinda of make a line there. If your maze has more than one way through it, that's totally fine. I'm just gonna like make some fun lines. This looks like a cool thing to make with a maze. There's no start and finish to this maze. It's just like how the things land. If you wanna move your line, so you get like all your lines down, you're like, uh, this line, see how it's too close here and it's like too far there. I'm gonna click this little mouse button. Now I can move it. See, I'll move it up and down a little bit. Eh, it's too long. Uh-oh, come on. There we go. And so kind of play with it, make it happy. Now, you've got your lines. If I hit play, I am now a Pac-Man and I can move around my board. Well, here's the problem. In real life, Pac-Man's not supposed to be able to go through these like line things, right? He's supposed to run into them and get stuck. So how do we fix that? Let me show you. So coming on over back to our code, I am, you see like, oh no, my code disappeared. Where did it go? So over here, you are clicked on the stage right now. So there's no code here because we haven't coded our stage and we probably won't even. If I click on Sprite 1 though, look, there's all my code. I click back to stage and it disappears. It's because everything gets its own code in Scratch. We only coded this guy because he's the only thing that moves so far. When we get some ghosts, we'll code the ghosts and that'll be awesome, but we're just not at that stage yet. So this looks pretty good. I've got myself a nice maze here and I've got my Pac-Man and he's like chomping away, but he can walk through walls. How do you keep a Pac-Man from walking through a wall? It's pretty easy. All you have to do is add this if statement to the end. I'm gonna say, okay, if we are touching, oops, wrong touching, touching color, and then what color should we pick? We want that blue color. Do you remember what the numbers were? I don't. That's okay. Do you see this little eyedropper picture thing? So you click on that and now, whoa, everything got dark, ooh. If you move your mouse over here though, look, I can pick what color I want. I make it turn yellow by like hovering over that. Or I'm gonna move my mouse, ooh, there we go. That looks like a good color. I'll pick that blue color. So if we're touching blue, what do we want to do? So if we moved 10 steps to run into the blue and now we're touching it, all we do is move Oops, negative 10 steps. And that should get us away from the blue. So let's go and give it a try. So I can run in here, but uh-oh, I'm trying to run through the blue and it's not working. Hmm. All right, that's looking good. I feel like I'm able to stay away from the blue, but uh-oh, look at this. I didn't make it, oh, whoa, weird. I didn't make it big enough. I don't fit through these holes. Do you see that? I don't know how I phased, oh no, actually I do know how I, 
I phased through that one. It's pretty funny. So his mouth, I pointed it up, and then when his mouth opened, I could jump through that hole. That's not going to work so well for this one, though. I'm having all kinds of problems. So how are you supposed to get yourself through these holes that you don't fit through? Now, I could redraw my maze, um, but that's not going to, that's kind of hard. I don't want to do that. So the other option is, you see the size thing? Look, you can change how big he is. Oh, look at that. He's tiny. How cute. Neural. Look how tiny he is. He can jump through any and all walls that he wants to now. Or he can fit through all the gaps. He doesn't go through the walls. He doesn't need to go through the walls. Because he's small enough. He fits in all the holes. So 10 might have been a little too small. Let's try 1,000. Huh. I think that might be too big. What do you guys think? Yikes. All right. Um, so we know it's between 10 and 1,000. Let's try 100. Uh-oh. Where'd he go? There he is. Peekaboo. He fits through most of the holes. Uh Oh, I got in that hole. All right. This hole's looking a little small, though. Hmm. All right, let's try a little smaller. Let's try 80. Does he fit? Ooh, uh-oh. No, don't fit through that one. Let's try 70. So just try numbers until he's the right size. Wee! Oh, look at that. I totally fit. All right, here we go. We're cruising. Choo. All right, so this guy's looking good. I like how this Pac-Man moves. And he isn't able to get, er, uh-oh. Maybe 70 wasn't small enough. Let's go 60. I was going to say he's not able to get stuck. Now he can't get stuck. Perfect. And he can't go through the walls. He Life is good for this Pac-Man. Right? All right, so that's awesome. Our Pac-Man's moving. But do you remember what else was in the maze? A game's not fun unless you have bad guys, right? So, ooh, what are those guys? Remember these? Where if I run into one, I'm dinner, right? And get, it's like game over. So, let's go ahead and see if we can make those guys. Now, there is no good sprite for a ghost. Where the Pac-Man, he was easy to make because he was like just a circle. Let me show you how to make a ghost, though. So, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to paint a new one. This, I don't want to delete my Pac-Man, right? The Pac-Man's good. So I'm going to hit paint. And now, ooh, look, I got a second one. This one, I am, instead of going to making like a circle, I'm going to go to make a ghost. Uh, what color do we want our ghost? Maybe I choose my ghost to be, let's make the red one first. I'm going to kind of make him like that pinkish color. That looks good. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw a circle. What is happening though? Look, I have a huge blue outline on my circle. That's gross. Oh, maybe it's because I have that blue outline from when I was drawing the lines. Okay, so I'm gonna hit here and hit none. There we go. So how do you draw a ghost? Oops. Basically the key is you start with this shape. It's like kind of an oval, right? And then you grab a rectangle. Now the key is your rectangle has to be the same size as your oval. And look how I can basically make, like, the shape of most of a ghost. And there he is. Now, you might be like, hang on. My ghost is, like, kind of lopsided. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, see if I, oops, there we go. You're going to click back to this select tool, the little mousey. Then see if I click and drag, I draw, like, this dotted box. That's what you want. You're going to go and take it, and now, see how I can make my ghost skinny? Oh, it's like a tombstone. There we go. That looks a little better. Maybe I want to, like, scale in both dimensions. Ooh, it's looking good. So I kind of adjust it, see how it feels. I'm going to put it back in the middle. There we go. Um, I guess it's a little too high, I think. Let's go ahead and make them shorter. Uh, I'm going to kind of play with some of these dimensions. That looks good. Yeah. All right, I like that ghost. So now... How does the ghost work? The ghost is a little bit tricky. He, on our game, is going to patrol, meaning he'll have a secret path that only he knows where he's going to go back and forth along that path, and I'll show you how to pick what that is. So this is our ghost. I think I like that color. 
I'm going to show you how to change it so that we can have, even have like a rainbow ghost in a minute. But first, let's go to make him move back and forth. So we'll start with him. I think that looks like a good spot to start, right? Now, in order for this to work, you have to hit the red stop button. So I'm going to hit the red stop button. And see how I move the ghost? And it's a little bit weird, but basically we are going to use what are called X and Y coordinates. So as I move the ghost, see how this arrow like goes side to side? So if I just move it sideways, see how that number changed a lot? And the one that had the up-down arrows doesn't change at all. So I move it straight sideways, and that is going to change the X number. The Y number tells me where it is up and down. So I'll go up and down and see how that Y number changes. So... Instead of trying to figure out like what the perfect number is, I'm actually just going to go ahead and put the ghost where I want it. And then look at this. This block automatically set to wherever I am. I got 206 and 25. 206 and 25 right there. If I move it over here, ooh, look, the block changed. Cool. So all I need to do at this point is come over here, and I'm going to grab this block. There we go. That looks good. And then I'm going to define, basically I'm going to pick what the special path for my Pac-Man is. So um, he's going to start here. Then the next place he's going to go is here. So I'll grab the block again. And look, it has different numbers because remember I moved him. Then I want him to go down here. Grab that block again. And then I want him to come in here. Grab that block again. And I think that's good. Now let's go ahead and see what happens. So he's going to start there. Two, two do perfect now i don't want him to just do it once though i want him to do it forever right so i'll put it in a forever block uh oh it didn't do anything why not i forgot to hit one flag click so let's add that to the top there we go all right so here he goes he's kind of zooming around uh oh so he goes there just fine did i ever tell him how to get back though no, actually, I didn't. So he's just using linear interpolation, it's called. He's just guessing what's the best way for me to get back. So I'm going to go ahead and give him a hint. I'll tell him, all right, go here. Now I'll go like that, grab that block. Then I'm going to say, all right, then go this way. And I'll grab that block. And now I could tell him, go all the way back here. But I noticed that block is going to get me in the same location, or almost the same location as this block. Do you see that? So I'm going to go ahead and actually just leave him kind of where he is. The idea is, if this isn't a forever block, see how my next block, it says is a 20621? And that's the first block I have. So if I just put that in there, all it's going to do is it's going to go there twice, because it hits the last block, and then remember, the forever just spits it back to the top. So I don't need that block. I'm going to hit Start. Oh, there he goes. Let's see how he goes. Oh, yeah. All right. So he's guarding that middle passage. And then my Pac-Man guy is able to come through here. Uh-oh. Here he comes. Better be careful. Whew. That was a close one. All right. I'm going to see if I can get through. Oh, no. He caught me. Oh, wait. I didn't die. Uh-oh. What's wrong? I can run right through him, and he doesn't care. In fact, I don't care either. That's not good. What's wrong with this ghost? Did I ever code it to make me die? I don't think I did. Let me show you how to code it so that this guy actually dies when he gets hit by a ghost. So, here we have if touching color blue back up. Let's go ahead and add another if touching. So I'm going to hit uh, control, if. And what is he going to be touching? He's not touching a color. He is now touching Sprite 2. See how Sprite 2 is the ghost? In fact, I'll name it Ghost. So I'll call this um, G-H-O-S-T. That's how you spell ghost. So this Sprite now see it says ghost. And every time I click on it, it shows me, yep, that's the ghost, sure enough. So I'll come back here. This is the code for the ghost, right? I'll click here. This is the code that I was in the middle of working on. If he's touching the ghost, though, what should happen? He should die. How do you die? Well, it's kind of up to you. In this one, they have like a cool like animation thing, right? Here, let me see if I can run into a ghost real quick so we can see it. Oh no. Ha, there we go. It has like that funny thing. Now, that seems a little tricky to do. What I can do though is much easier. Go ahead and hit looks. 
and you can say, uh, oh, I don't know, game over for two seconds. And what that's going to do, if we click on it, here, let's die first. He says, game over. But is the game really over? No, I can keep playing. Game over, he says. Bummer. Oh, well, I'll just keep playing. How do I make the game actually stop? Check this out. So after I say game over, you can go ahead and switch to control and hit stop all. That means, all right, go ahead and take whatever's going on. I don't care what was happening. This game is over and nothing else is happening. See, now I can't move. I can't click anything. The only way to start again is just that, hit that green flag. Oh, I already died. So this is a problem. If my Pac-Man's right here when it starts, I just die right away because that ghost guy goes so fast. How do I fix that? Let me go ahead and make my Pac-Man start somewhere else. So I'm going to drag him. Oh, this looks like a safe spark starting spot, right? And then I'm just going to hit this motion. And remember, we had the glide that we did before. I don't want him to glide there, though. Glide means, like, move slowly, kind of like the ghost is. Or, like, kind of move there. We also have this option to say go to. I'm going to go ahead and add that right before we go into our forever loop. So before I give you control with the arrow keys, I want it to just go where it is right now. So it doesn't matter where it is. Say I start it right there. He's just going to jump right there so that at least I have a chance of avoiding this ghost thing. There we go. And so now I'm able to see, all right, am I able to reach the end? All right, it looks like we actually have almost all of this made. So in our next video, we're going to do a little bit more advanced stuff. I'm going to show you like, all right, how do you make this look even cooler? How do you add some extra functionality? But this is the base level Pac-Man game. In our next video, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add a few things. I'm going to show you how to make the ghost change color. I'll show you how to add some more ghosts. And I'll even show you how to add these little dots that we didn't get to adding um, where you're basically you're able to kind of eat them up and that's ends up being how you win that way you know you don't have a game that you can only lose at least you can win this game too so in our next lesson we're going to cover all that other than that thank you so much for watching if this was helpful to you and you're thinking hey you know i might be interested in a little bit more of this um i want some more expert-led classes to show me how to make all kinds of other cool projects in scratch and python and whatever pro platform you're using um we have on our website create-learn.us a whole bunch more classes go ahead and check it out other than that though thank you so much for watching and i look forward to seeing you in the next video